Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kim Ferguson. This is a Makers with Heart mystery envelope challenge. Thank you to Lori Kuchst for sending us our mystery envelope this month. She says that we're going to hate her for this one because she's stretching our skills. We have to use every piece that is in this, big or small. You have just have to use some part of in your creation. You can add as many other cardstocks. Embellishments are free and use them to our heart's content. And we may not use our technique that's normal to us which mine as you know is paper piecing so here are the pieces of paper they came from the four seasons spring paper collection and then some lemonade shimmer trim so and then she says have fun and she can't wait to see what we're going to create so i'm trying to expand my mixed media here and Lori loves to use her distress inks so if you watch her video, make sure that she didn't use her distress sinks, but I'm going to use them in honor of her today. So this is a photo collage that I've recently uploaded. The app on my phone It's called Epson Creative Print, and I have the PictureMate 400, and that is what I printed that on on a 5x7 photo paper. So if you're looking for something to use on your phone to do collages and you have an Android like I do, works perfectly. So here is a template or a stencil that I had in my craft space. This is not close to my heart, but it's what I needed for coming up with the brick background. The photos are of my mom. We spent a day together last week and she loves to do the Friends theme, not the Friends TV series, but the Friends like the little girly Lego sets. And so we were trying to find some other stores in her area that might carry Lego sets. So we went to this store called Brick Circuit Toy Store. I don't know why it says toy store because the entire place is Legos. So it should really be the Lego store, but they probably can't put the brand name on their sign. So I do get that. So I wanted something that would portray bricks, obviously for Lego building. And so this template that I had in my stash was perfect. So here is that picked raspberry distress ink or distress oxide. And then just my um, sponge dauber here and just moving this around and doing some mixed media on the background of this white daisy cardstock. I'm being really gentle here as this template doesn't have any adhesive on the back. So I'm just holding it down with my fingers and keeping those lines lined up so that I can move it again. And I continued that brick pattern as if it's going in a diagonal behind my photo collage. To bring in that visual triangle, I'm going to do a spot up here at the top in the right hand corner as well. And that's just going to be a smaller area just to do a little cluster. So the other thing that I had to pull myself away from was my paper piecing. And uh, if you know me at all, I love to do paper piecing. In fact, I do have a second video that went up today because today is also my paper piecing creators video hop, which is always on the last Saturday of the month. But I couldn't do my paper piecing, so I couldn't combine the videos. So I hope that you'll hop over on my channel and watch that video as well. I've invited those paper piecing video watchers to come over and watch this video to see about our mystery envelope. So our mystery envelope challenge is always on the 25th of the month. All seven of us go up. So the playlist will be in the description below to go around and see the other seven makers with heart and what they did with this mystery envelope challenge. So my final mixed media was to use this mode lawn to do some splatters with just some water and a paintbrush. Next thing I wanted to do is to put some dark green around the edge of this lighter green cardstock and that will help it to kind of pop off the page. I'm not sure if you can tell in the video there, but I've done two sides and two were left without the inking and it really just helps it to kind of lift off the page, draws your eye into the collage rather than kind of, you know, filtering out into the white background. So just dimension and uh, framing. So there are the distress inks that I used. And now I'm going to use the pieces and parts that were sent by Lori to do some paper layering. I also decided to tear out a couple places on my white daisy as I mounted this on a dark green background. I'm terrible with knowing the colors of cardstock. If you really need to know, please ask in the description below and I will look it up for you, but I don't have the cardstock colors right in front of me. 
The next thing is I want to tap into our lovely Crafting with Amanda and her paper flowers. So I'm going to use flowers to go for what Amanda likes to share because she can't share it this time. So I thought, okay, let's do some floral arranging. Again, not something I'm as natural at figuring out, but I had all these leaves and a few flowers from the, let me look here, the name of the set is Sweet Safari. D is in dog 1927. It is a retired set. And how I came across finding that stamp set is this is my stamp inventory. So anytime I get stamps in my craft room, I stamp them in there. And that is how I look to find what it is I'm hoping to use or getting a collection out to possibly use on my layouts. Someone had mentioned Evernote and I've been given a couple other ideas in some um, comments in prior videos, but Evernote is the one that just instantly comes to my mind, but I don't do that digitally. And then I pulled in a Lego stamp set. I know it's not close to my heart, but we're gonna be doing Legos here. So I did bring in some, uh, you know, off-brand from close to my heart uh, stamps in here. Sorry, makers with heart. <laughs> So the stamp sets I showed you were For My Mother, Go Far Occasions, Sweet Safari, and From the Notebook Stamp of the Month. That is what I use for my journaling lines. So I have cut these papers down to layer behind my photo collage, and then I'm trying to figure out how I can layer them to where they line up from top to bottom, because mind you, they weren't long enough to go behind that matted photo collage. So I probably made this way more work than it should have been, but I'm just showing you every step here. There was a comment in my Coast to Coast video where I didn't show how I did my layering. So I want you to know I heard you and I'm showing you this time. So I just found that if I layered them next to each other and put them off, you know, off center from each other and layered a little bit, um, that's how I, I made this happen. So I hope that was a little bit more of an explanation and helpful. I'm showing you with our brand new T-square ruler that there is one side that is flat all the way from the T-top down to the bottom 14 inch long. And then there's a side that had, kind of goes over the edge of our Versa mat perfectly to give you something to move along. You'll watch me here as I move this T-square ruler around. It's right there at the edge of the Versa mat and helps me to keep everything straight. I love that ruler. I have it beside me all the time, unless uh, you're watching my other video from day today where I was lazy and it was behind me. It took me a little while to bring it forward. So I don't always have it right there in front of me, but today I did, <clears throat> pardon me. So there, my layers are all set. So I've used all of the pieces of paper. There's still some scraps over to the left, but it didn't say I had to use all of every single piece of paper. I had to have something of all of them on the layout. So now I'm just auditioning some stamps from those stamp sets that I pulled out. I did use at least one stamp from each of those that I pulled. So I'm using up in the top where that half circle is, it says, you're the best. Over to the left says, this is my happy place. And the bottom right says mother. So this again is my mother. My mom is probably not only my biological best friend, but I think she'd be my best friend even if we, we weren't even related. So uh, not many people can say that about their mom, but I do truly have a wonderful relationship with her. And we are so like-minded. And for all the 56 years I've lived, we still never quit talking. So I don't know how we always find things to talk about. <laughs> so anyway, this is just a layout of her and she does not mind if I show her. So you get to see some photos on a layout. I didn't have to cover them up with my emoji little punches or with my photo holders. So I'm excited to share her with you. So now what I'm doing for you is I'm testing those stamps with the New England Ivy. I was thinking that would be a dark green to help with, you know, contrasting to the greens that are on the leaves and the mat. So before I commit to them and stamp them down on my actual layout, I stamp them on a scrap photo holder, and then I'm going to place them around and see what I think. And I was thinking it was too dark. So there are other greens. I was considering fern, but um, instead I got to looking at the pattern paper and I didn't have much blue. So I went for the Carolina ink instead of the New England Ivy. So the colors again that I have brought in are Picked Raspberry and Mowed Lawn. Those were the Distress Oxide Distress inks. 
And then my close to my heart inks are Carolina. I do bring Fern in for the year the best half circle rather than the New England Ivy. And then I will be using black for some added accent. So I think that bringing that blue in just kind of got rid of that really dark green that distracted from the photos because you can see my mom is wearing that light green uh, shirt. And then the other thing I have, of course, I have, a, I have a Lego lady that I colored with colored pencils from close to my heart to match the outfit my mom's wearing. And then these are my floral clusters or more leaf clusters with some Lego bricks in them. Now, I will confess to you that this was our Thursday Zoom day and I'm on with my crafty friends, including Crafting with Amanda, who is a Maker with Heart maker. And I was taking pictures of my clusters and sending it her to her and another fellow Zoom person. And they were giving me some tips because I was like, Amanda, you've got this skill. I don't. Can you just give me some, you know, some feedback on this? And so I originally only had two flowers and they're like, maybe add another flower if you can. So what worked out was I had nine flowers so I could do three florals in each of my clusters on this layout. So I was really pleased with that because these were things I had already stamped and colored in my stash. And I just keep them in that traveling zip block or the zip bag that I showed earlier where all my leaves and greenery have been cut and stored in that zipper traveling bag. It's one that you can get uh, for storing jewelry in it. So I don't know if I talked over that. I may have because I'm pretty excited about sharing everything with you today. <laughs> but anyway, that's where all those were. They were already made. And fortunately, there were nine flowers, so it worked out perfectly. So it's like I knew, I knew I needed to have an odd number and things need to be in threes. So here are those Lego bricks and uh, the gals on Zoom thought that the bricks were just a nice little added touch. Again, this is not a Close to My Heart product, but it is a Lego story. So I brought these in here. So just trying to show that use things from your stash Yes, close to my heart, papers are my most favorite. I love our inks, I love our stamps, but I do bring in a few things every once in a while to work on my layouts because I love all things paper crafting. <laughs> all right, here is that journaling block that I use. Now this would be something you would put on, say, um, a library card because there's a place to put a date. It also has the line vertically on the side as if it was a piece of notebook paper, but I just put the ink on the very inside lines so you're going to see me kind of trying to lay this on here strategically. I do end up getting a few places that I don't want inked with the black on there. And so I'm going to take it over to the side here and wipe some of that off and try again. So when I do stamp this down, it doesn't come out perfectly. There's going to be some smudges. So at the end, when I put my last little embellishments on there, you'll see how I cover that up. So in paper crafting, and don't look at things as, oops, I made a mistake, I've ruined this. Look at it, you know, just like Bob Ross, it was a happy little accident. And there's always some way you can cover it up. There's stickers, there's enamel dots, there's gems, there's, you know, florals. There's all kinds of ways that you can cover up things. So don't give up just because something smudges. And I don't even know if you can really see it in the photo here, but there is a few little smudges on there. So again, just fussing around with my clusters. They are all glued down now. So now I wanna go around with that Carolina ink and stamp the, this is my place and the mother. And I'm gonna put those down on the white daisy cardstock. So you can see why I was just auditioning with some scrap, because I wanted to be sure about the color and I wanted to be sure of the placement. Now, when I first put the scrap piece down with the stamped image of a, this is my happy place, I had put it up higher. I like it down lower where it's kind of nestled in with that floral cluster. And same thing with mother, kind of nestles up in there under the collage, but next to the, the paper layering. So everything just fits right in nice and snug, looks cohesive and looks like I was very intentional. So to bring out a pop of another color, I'm gonna bring the black in because I've used the black for the journaling lines and then the leaves and everything are with the darker green and then the Lego bricks I did stamp with black as well as the Lego lady. So just to give this little pop of interest, I'm bringing in some black with these three little hearts that were on one of those stamp sets. If you have any questions about which the stamp sets I used and where these particular stamps came from of those sets, please ask in the description below. I'm happy to help with that. 
So going with those odd numbers, I only wanted to put five. I was kind of playing around with other places to put the hearts, but I chose just the five. Here are my choices that I was going to do for some embellishing. And these are the Bashful Pearls, the Make Wave Sequins and Gems. That's an oldie. The Gold Fleck Gems, the Glitter Gems in Bluebell, and the gl Glitter Gems in Sugar Plum. So I did use the Gold, the Bluebell, and the Sugar Plum. And again, going with that Rules of Threes, I'll be popping those around. But I was also thinking I do really like the Gold Fleck Gems on this layout because it goes well with that Lemonade Shimmer Trim. And then just to bring out some sparkle for the yellow that's on this. And so I decided it's perfect for the centers of my nine flowers. Really like how that pulled the flowers in, gave them a little bit of glitz. So now here's where I'm going to play with the Blue Bell and the Sugar Plum Glitter Gems. I'm going to cluster them together in sets of three in all of my floral clusters. And then my final touch will be to cover up those smudges from our journaling lines by using some of the tinier ones over there on the lower left. So again, today is, I think it's my favorite day of the month. It's Mystery Envelope Challenge with Makers with Heart. Seven of us, playlist below, hop around and see what everybody did with these same pieces and parts from Lori. Give everyone a like, Give us a comment on how do you feel about these mystery envelope challenges? And is it something that you would ever consider doing with the scraps that you have in your room, uh, your craft room? Maybe hopping around and sharing with your crafty friends and see what you all can come up with with the same pieces. We look forward to this every month and we love it. If you miss us on the 25th, we'll be back on the 10th of March. We always do our monthly collaborations on the 10th through the 16th. We each go up one time a day in a row. So this is the only day we're all on here together. That wasn't very good English, sorry. The other thing I wanna let you know about is we're very excited to announce to you that coming up on April 22nd, we are gonna be doing an all day virtual crop. That's right, the Makers with Heart will be sending out information and letting you know more and more as they get closer to the date. But we hope that you will put that in your calendar now, April 22nd, virtual crop with the Makers with Heart. Thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you in the next video. Take care and happy crafting.